Okay, so now that we have a player that is idling, we will have to add some movement to him. And we will need to add two things to the player to be able to move him around. First of all, we will need to add a rigid body to him, because we are going to use the rigid body to move him. And the rigid body is actually something that um, communicates with the physics in Unity. So, to be able to do that, we will have to click on the player in our, our hierarchy. And click on add component and here we have to search for rigid okay so as you can see two kinds of rich rigid bodies comes up when you just write a uh, rig here and the rigid body without 2d is for 3d objects but we are creating a 2d platformer so we will have to select the rigid body 2d here to add it to the player so when you have added this to the player, the player can now interact with the physics in our in our game world. Um, and as you can see here, if I play the game right now, the player will now start falling to the ground right away because now he has physics on him. So right now we are actually not interested in um, adding the physics to him or like set the gravity on him. Um, but we might want to do that later though. So right now we'll have to set the gravity scale if you select the player and go to the rigid body. You can set the gravity scale here to um, zero, for example. So now if the gravity scale is zero, well then he won't fall to the ground when you play the game like this. We will have to add the gravity later when we add our game, like our platforms and stuff. But uh, for now when we're testing the movement, it's easier if we simply just put the gravity scale to zero. Okay, so now we have the rigid body that we will need to manip manipulate to move the player around. But besides that, we will also have to add a script to him. So, go to your script folder here and right click, click create and select a C-sharp script because that's the language we are going to code in. And when you have that script, call it player. So, this is going to be our player script. To um, add the script to the player, you can simply just take the script and drag it onto the player here on the inside the hierarchy and now you'll see that the script here has been added to the player so now all the functionality that we'll be writing inside the player script will be um, applied to the player here so now we can actually move him if we write some code for that so the next thing we will have to do is to open the script so we can write our code so double click on it and yeah open up the script as this Okay, so we will have to do some different things in here to make the player move. First of all, we will have to make a um, reference to the player's rigid body because we are going to use this rigid body here on the player to move him around. So we need to add a reference in the script so that it can access this rigid body and move the player from left to right. So first of all, we are going to write um, private rigid body 2D. And we are going to call it my rigid body. Okay. So now we have a variable for containing our rigid body. The next thing we'll have to do is to add the reference because right now we have just have an empty variable that doesn't point on uh, any any component or anything. So this one is empty and it's not pointing towards anything it needs to manipulate or reference. So to make a reference between this rigid body in here and the rigid body out here in the player, we'll have to write my rigid body equals rigid body no, get component rigid body 2D. So now we have a reference to the player's uh, rigid body here inside this variable. Um, the next thing we'll have to do is to create a new function because we will need a function for moving the player around. So we can simply go to down here under update, we can write private void handle movement. And this function here is going to handle all the movement um, that the player is going to do uh, throughout the, the this, uh, this game here. So to be able to set the player's movement, we'll have to access the rigid body here and we'll have to apply a force to it or an, a velocity to it to move it around. So for now, 
let's just try to add some functionality and we'll, we'll do this step by step so you understand what happens so we can say my rigid body dot velocity so as you can see here velocity here is a, a vector 2 it's written here maybe it's hard to see on the video but there's written and that is a type of rigid ve vector 2 so if you add a vector 2 to, as the velocity well then the player will move around so let's say if we wanted him to move to the left we could simply say well the velocity is equal to new vector 2 or we can actually just say it's, it's equal to vector 2 dot left like this so now the velocity is vector 2 dot left and vector 2 dot left is a vector with a x value of minus 1 and a y value of 0 so that's a vector 2 dot left so the x is minus 1, so we move negative on the x-axis, and y is 0, so we don't move up or down. So um, we can try to do this. If we save the script, I'm not sure if I remember to save. Save the script here, and we call the handle movement function in update. We'll always remember to call the function. If we don't do it in update, well, then it's not going to be called, so we need to call handle movement here. And then we save. So if we play the game now, you'll see that the player starts moving to the left by himself without us pressing any keys or anything. Okay, so we're not interested in that. We will need to add some functionality so we can actually control how much the player moves, right? Or at least control the direction of the player. So to do that, we will have to read the horizontal axis. Um, and we can do that by going up here in update making a float, call it horizontal and it's equal to input dot get axis horizontal okay so what does this do well in unity there is a class called input and inside there there is a function called get axis so this one looks at the input axes and all this is set up inside the input settings so if we go to unity here and we find the input and let's see edit uh, project settings and input here it is and in here you can see when you select this is this is not something you need to do I'm just explaining you what it is there is some different axes here and you can see there is a horizontal axis and in here everything is bound so that you can see what is actually affecting the horizontal axis so as you can see here the axis is the x-axis when it's horizontal so it's from left to right and right to left um, the name of the axis is horizontal so that's why we're writing horizontal in here in our um, our script to get that axis and then you can see like the navigation buttons that are bound to this is left and right and a and d on the keyboard right so you can use the arrows left and right and you can use the keyboard a and d to um, access this one and then there's the sensitivity and everything how how um, sensitive it should be so this means that you can actually apply this code here to a game that uses a um, a joystick or joypad and a keyboard or something right so you don't need to write specific code if you port the game to um, let's say a platform that uses only controllers then you don't need to go in and write well if it's on an Xbox you'll need to use left right arrows if it's on a computer you need to use a and d so this is basically what we are accessing the horizontal input here okay and we are saving the value because it returns a value between 0 and 1 <clears throat> and it returns it into this float here so we'll be saving this horizontal here we can actually try to debug it if we say debug.log now and write horizontal like this and save it then you'll see when you play the game you'll notice like right now it's right zero if I press the buttons you'll see now it goes one because I hold D down actually let's do like this console here and go now nah, let's just do it so if I hold D down you'll see that it goes to yeah 0 0.9 if I hold a down well then you'll see that it goes to minus so you can see we can use this value here positive and negative value to move the player from left to right now 
<clears throat> okay, so we can remove this debug, we don't need it, but we'll need to use this horizontal float here inside our um, handle movement function. So how do we do that? Well, we need to get this horizontal float value from here inside our update to our handle movement so that we can use it down here when we move. And to do that, we'll have to define a parameter. So we write float horizontal. And now you can see that this one complains that there is no argument given to the corresponding required formal par parameter and so on. And that's because we just defined our handle movement that it needs to take in a float and right now here we have a float, so we can actually say that this horizontal is passed on from the update to the handle movement. So the value of horizontal is now available from inside our handle movement. So I can write horizontal here to access this value up here. So this one gives in here and it's equal to this one. And now we can use it in here. So how do we use it? Well, we say our my rigid body is equal to new vector two and it's going to ask for a x value and the x value is the horizontal so horizontal comma and the y value well we don't want to change the y value here so we're just going to use the current y value of um, of my rigid body so my rigid body dot velocity dot uh, y and that's it right now so now we have added some functionality so that we can actually move the character around inside handle movement. So let's save this and yeah, go to Unity. Clear the console, we don't need this anymore. And let's see. So now the character doesn't move. If I press the D button, he slowly moves to the right. If I press the A button, he slowly moves to the left. And the same goes for the arrow keys, right? If I press uh, right arrow he goes to right and if I press left arrow he goes to the left okay so um, the next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that we can add a speed to him so if we go to the player and scroll all the way to the top here in our field we'll have to add a new field called speed so make a private float call it speed or movement speed or something so this is going to determine how fast the player is going to move. But we will like to access this one from our inspector so that we can change it from within our game. So on top of this, we make a square bracket and write serialized field and we close the square bracket. So right now, our movement speed is serialized. So the reason that I make it private and serialized instead of just um, public is that when something's private, you're not able to access from other scripts. And I don't think that we will need other scripts to access the movement speed. And in object or in the program, we'll have to hide as much from the other scripts as possible. So just make it private instead of public and make it serialized. When it's serialized, we can go to our player. And you'll notice that the movement speed is now up here. And, and we can basically right let's let's try to write 10 first of all so right now we're not using the movement speed for anything so we'll have to go back to the script and go down here to our handle movement and the horizontal um, movement here we'll have to multiply oh, sorry not like we have to multiply it with our uh, speed movement speed here so now the movement speed has been added to um, to the movement of of the player here okay so right now, um, yeah, let's just try to run this. We can fix something after. Um, if we run it now, you'll see that the player suddenly moves way faster here when you are moving from left to right because you have 10. And if you want to change this around, you can add it to 5 or something. And you'll see that he goes slower. If you put it as 20, he goes like very, very fast. So you can basically just play around with this and put it at the speed that you want. Um, but for now, I actually think that I want to put it at... Um, let's say, yeah, 10. I think I want to keep it at 10. Uh, yeah. So, I have put the moment speed at 10. Remember, when you play the game and you change something, let's say we put it at 50 and I stop playing the game, you'll notice that it jumps back to, to the value it had before you played the game. 
Okay. So right now we have some movement on the player, but it's not correct at the moment because we're using update and the update runtime or the time that update runs is actually based on the frame rate, which means that if I run 60 frames per second, then update is going to be called 60 times a second. But if I have a computer that runs 100 frames per second, well then update is going to be called 100 times per, per second, which means that the faster computer will move the, uh, the player faster than the slow computer. Um, and to prevent this, we'll have to use fixed update instead. So instead of update here, you can write fixed update like this. So now we have fixed update and fixed update runs a fixed amount of time based on something called time step. Um, we're not going to go into the time step right now, um, but basically it says that because of the time step, if it's 0 0.02 or something, I think it's the standard, well, then it runs 50 times per second, regardless of your frame rate. So if you have 100 frame rate, it still runs the same amount of times. So the speed of the player will be the same, regardless of the platform and regardless of uh, the hardware power that you're running on. So if you go back, you might notice that he, the player might be slower than it was before, even though the speed is 10. Um, so it might be a little different than before, but now it's using fixed update, which is the correct way of moving something when you're using a rigid body or something with physics. So I think that's it for this part of the tutorial. In the next part, we are going to have a look at how we can flip the player in the correct direction, because right now he's moving backwards when we're moving to the lift, and that's not ideal at all. Uh, we'll have to flip him around so that he faces the correct direction, of course.